Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're going to work on something that's been a request a couple of times and we're happy to do it. We just didn't have a chance to get to it. It is Cool Thing As You Go. We did it as a bigger project on one of our uh, blocks of the month that we did for Christmas a couple of years ago, but I did it more as a row. I did it as a row to row instead of like a block quilt as you go sort of thing. So what we have here is I have two separate blocks. And I did them in two very separate ways. I just did one. Well, I had, these were actually uh, demos. I was testing out our AccuQuilt cutter, and um, I made these two blocks just to make. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll make a nice little uh, table runner. Canada Day is coming, so why not? And uh, so what I did is I quilted the blocks. What I did, I made the sandwich. You have your backing, your batting, and your block. And then with my walking foot on not speed mode, just a little uh, less lower than pedal to the metal. Uh, I went just down and stitched in the ditch just following the lines. I could have done this way and this way as well. I didn't. It doesn't really matter. What I did do, oops, probably going to need that, um, was make sure that there was enough batting on the sides to be able to trim up because as you quilt it, it's going to get a little smaller, okay? So let's do the quilting of this one first. And the other ones are just plain white squares that I just did some, you know, weird cross hatching and just try to just to put it together this is going to be for our own table or wall hanging what doesn't really matter and uh and then we're just going to tuck under here and then we're going to sew those lines just like i did on the first one there okay so i'm just gonna lift the foot you will find that the bottom of your walking foot is very grippy so it may try and pull and try and chump at your your batting so don't fight it just try and make sure your arm is lifted the it is lifted all the way to be able to wiggle things under okay and then just and a nice big stitch. I, it's not the 2.4. It's usually I go like three or three and a half and just try and stitch in the ditch as close as you can. Did I hit the record? Oh, I did hit the record. Sorry. I'm like, did I hit the record button? <laughs> Before we get too far gone here. <laughs> all right, there. And then just same, make sure you lift the foot all the way. And then line it up, and we're just going to go down the, the three lines. Just to show you how easy it is to quilt as you go. Okay. And of course, you just do this on a bigger scale to keep, you keep progressing and progressing, and you can make a nice big quilt project. If you, haven't, if you don't have the, uh, the neck space to be able to free motion one or ruler work one in your machine, then this is a great way to do it as a quilt as you go. Oh, did it pop up? No. Okay. Oh, it did pop up. Alright, now the next three going the other direction. Okay, like I said, they got little grippies on the bottom of the not grippies, but they're it's ridged. And it will definitely start to pick up on that uh, the batting. Let's put that a little out of the way. Of course, you can use safety pins to pin this. It's whatever whatever you have on hand. Even just regular pins, or even just base stitches if you just want it to. If that's all you got, just be able to use a thicker thread and do some big bulk base stitches to hold things together while you get it quilted. All right, and then one more. Come on, scoot it under there. Make sure it's folded under. There we go. And that's really one block quilted right there. And if you did, you know, that couple of blocks every day, you'd have yourself a quilt in no time. 
okay? So just very simply quilted. It doesn't have to be fancy, but you can do fancy. It's up to you. You can do the whole free motion part. Okay, so now once we take the pins out, because it's all stitched together, it's all as, as one unit like this one here, we're going to trim it so we can actually add a little piece to be able to sew to the top, okay? So we can actually make that little space in between to where the batting, where their blocks are attached together. So it's a bit of a binding on one side and binding on the, on the other. So you could either hand stitch this one side at the back uh, very easily, just whip some stitches and, it, and that's done, or you can flip it back through the machine and do a machine stitch uh, if it's gonna match your front. I mean, it's completely up to you, but you, you can just machine the whole, the whole thing, okay? So now we're gonna trim. Let's trim up all but like three sides. And then the third side, we're gonna line up and try and use the batting that's in here, the batting that's in here as a, um, the filler in between the binding strip, okay? Okay. Of course, I'm gonna pick the one that's cut the most, okay? And then now what I wanna do is be able to trim the back off completely because you you're this is where you can add a different color binding. I'm just using white because I'm just doing something red and white. But if you want to use red, this is where you know I, I could keep it, but I'm gonna trim it because it needs to be like everybody else. Okay. All right, and now and then trim this to be about I'd say a half an inch because the the strip that I'm using in between to go from one to the next is an inch and a half. So if you think a quarter of an inch with batting and a quarter of an inch with batting, that's kind of like a, maybe a thick half inch. So, you know, a half inch in, in the strip of, of the batting being left over, um, it seems enough for me. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, now we take the front because we already got one on one side here, and that's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need one for each side, right? So we're gonna do the top part here, and we're just gonna sew all the way down, all the way down, right through, right through, okay? And this is how you join the blocks together, okay? This is just one for one block to the next, and then when we get to this part is where you join rows together because you have a bigger strip to deal with, okay? This is a great way to bust your uh, batting scraps left over from projects. Because I have a lot when it comes to the long arm stuff, so. Okay, there we go. And then once that gets flipped, it covers the batting area, and then this is enough room to get attached to the other side, and you got your binding in there, okay? So, all right, now we're gonna put those two pieces together, okay? We're gonna make them so they're one. So. I'm flipping the top. I'd rather have any hand stitching needing to be done on the back side, okay? So that's that's me. So I'm gonna line this up here. My floppy edge up to this one here. And sew it all the way down. Okay, come on, sneak under you. <laughs> it's persuasion. And this is a great project to uh, try your walking foot if you hadn't tried your walking foot before. It helps um, just go smoother over all these layers because when in the end, when you think about it, we're going to be going through like five or six. Come here, here, here. Move over a bit. Really? Seriously? Okay, there we go. What is going on? <laughs> Are we having a moment, Danny? Try this again, shall we? Nothing like storm scenes with attitude. <laughs> All right. Now, making sure you're keeping your batting out of the way, because that's just going to fill in the space. Okay. All right. So now, when we flip that over, that's enclosed on that side, and then this side here is where we tuck in the batting, just right next to the next section of batting, because it's just right there, edge to edge. Flip that over, tuck in the quarter inch seam allowance, and stitch down. And that's that. 
Isn't that easy? And then you can just do some whip stitches through here, or, or if you wanted to do it, you could do it the opposite way, and then on the front, you're using decorative stitches from your machine as an applique. Wouldn't that be nice? Be like a little applique from block to block sort of thing. Oh, you could do lots of beautiful stitches. I'm sure your machine even has like four or five. You could still do some fun stuff. Mix them up. Mix them up. Go crazy. All right, so then just pin that. And like I say, you can either whip stitch it, take it as a project to watching the kids and their, well, baseball is coming. We all know that. You can do one block at a time sort of thing. Take a few. And there you go. You can make uh, placemats or a little baby quilt or a picnic quilt or something like that. Uh, but I can easily just sew right down here because it's going to be in the white. It'll get lost in the white. Okay, so that's why I chose to have um, white as my thread and my fabric. Move it out of the way because you could easily hand stitch this. And I'll show you how we put the two rows together. Okay, make sure all the raw edges are tucked in. Okay, nice and smooth. And then we just trim up after. Okay. There we go. There's that side and that side. Okay, so now what we do is we trim one of these sides because we're going to add it to this one. Well, actually, I think it's going to go this way. So, because I want it to be like an X or a four patch, a big four patch. Okay, and then what we do is we do the same thing. Okay, this is going to go here. That's going to go there. We take this, flip it to the front. Put our pins in, see if we can line this up a bit, you know, line those two seams up so they look like they're supposed to be there. And we'll sew that down. And then we can do the same to the back side here with the other strip. Let's pin them at the same time. Okay, I just want to get that one there. Let's move a few pins here. Hope everybody has a fantastic Mother's Day weekend. We're going to continue working on our um, seahorse project tomorrow during the live stream, Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So please feel free to join us there. And there, we do have some uh, schedule changes towards the end of the month. So please check out the um, Facebook group or the Mafia group or even just on the YouTube. Uh, there's a community section there. You can always click on that. We try and keep uh, things posted up to date there. So, okay. Please and thank you. You're not going to miss any, well, there will still be streams. We're just going to be one on a Friday and one on a Sunday. So, so Papa and I can go celebrate our 24th wedding anniversary a little early. Normally it's on Canada Day, but he's got to do some business in Prince Edward Island. So we're going to take a little trippy together. Oops, I missed the one side. Okay, pin back up. Oh no, I missed on that side. Okay, here we go. And here. And here. There we go. Something was looking funny. Okay, now we're going to sew that seam all the way, okay? And that's going to give us our place in between here, as well as the piece to be able to flip. And then we got the little piece. Oops, there we go. It's around here somewhere. I think one of these pieces is it? Oh no, it's the one that fell on the floor. <laughs> it goes in between. Okay. We'll get it. But you could easily just leave that amount of batting on the bottom of the block, like on the two sides or the four sides or whatever, just be able to leave that uh, enough or instead or, or just insert a piece. There's many different ways. I'm not going to say this is the only way to do quilt as you go. There's probably about 110 different ways, and I'm sure people are going to think of more as, as they go along. So uh, this is just a way that I have, 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 have seen and have, have done. So. Pins are pokey today. And you just want to make sure you're keeping a very consistent quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Okay. Almost 
there. I'm trying to make sure everybody's in there. You need the whole section, so that's four bits of fabric and a bit of batting. That's why the walking foot is very much designed for these sorts of situations, right? Helps move things together as one unit. Okay, and then once that is sewn, take it, and you, so you can see it's all connected. It has one big, big square now, okay? A few more and you got yourself a baby quilt. Oh, it's the one on the floor, silly, come on. Okay, all right. Now you just take this piece here and you just snuggle it right in between. And it's only got that little channel to stay in so it's not going anywhere else. Okay, and then you just take this side, fold over the raw edge and tuck under and pin and you can sew, hand stitch, whatever it is that is your favorite means of getting um, fabric to cooperate <laughs> the way you want it. Okay. Just make sure the batting is tucked in there. And all your edges are under as well. And this would be a great uh, uh, one to do like a Christmas project, you know, blocks for Christmas. Great hand project. Like I say, you can always do hand stitching, even on the front if you want to do it the same way. But you do your fancy stitches on the front as you join the pieces together. So, and there we go. That is as easy as it gets for doing blocking as quilt as you go. And uh, hopefully you guys give it a try and we get to see bigger projects on your on our uh, web page okay so thank you everybody for watching liking and subscribing we greatly appreciate it here at the mama pop quilt shop have a fantastic weekend and uh enjoy we'll see you on the live stream okay bye everybody take care